Wow, it sure still feels surreal being a recipient of the Recognition Award at the 11th SAFTA ceremony. Personally, disability is a state of mind, it's how you view yourself. But for the fact that I've been recognized for the work that I do within the category, I've come to embrace it. There's nothing shameful about the fact that there are marginalized groups. There's nothing to be ashamed of about the fact that you're different. The softness came at a very good time for me because I've been in the news division for two and a half years and I was looking, okay, so William, what else can you do? <laughs> We've seen you present Produce Bupilong, you've brought stories that you said you wanted to, to bring, you've created platforms. Okay, so what else? What else can you do? When I got the call to say, <laughs> I'm getting an award, a softer award, I'm like, oh, me? Okay, I am? Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, so I'm getting an award. But I'm like, okay, really already? Because I'm here, I always thought to myself, award, the award will happen. But by then, I'll probably be like in my late 50s. And the recognition award, I'm grateful I received it this year because it will give me an opportunity to speak about issues that I wouldn't have been able to get the platform to address. My vision is long term. I'm not thinking right now or at the moment. I'm thinking long run, long, long term when I'm done, when I'm pursuing something else, can I leave space for other people to pursue careers that, uh, that I wanted to pursue, to walk on the same, uh, in the same footprints of, as myself? And uh, to start really initiating the conversation about disability, um, marginalized groups, being a person with albinism, albinism in general in Africa and, and how the rest of the world views it. The way I see myself is simple. Nothing that the popular, the status quo say about me is true. I'm not in a box. I'm larger, bigger than a box. You can't box me. Um, I'm not my shortcomings. I'm not my, my short-sightedness, my light skinness, um, my inability to articulate English in a certain way. I'm not that. That does not define me. Uh, what we've done from there to today, sitting here talking about my journey, uh, it just goes to show that there's so much to do. I come home every night and I'm excited. I'm like, I can't wait for tomorrow to do something new and explore and grow. I am more than just the lack of melanin in my skin. It's amazing how God works and it's amazing how vision and determination and, and not being scared to work hard can do for you. Don't, be, don't fear your, you, just how hard you can work. Hello. Hey. 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 As much as I'm more of an actress and I, I wanted to do theatre and act and, and go to Days of Our Lives one day and be a soap star, which will happen, uh, at the moment I'm really happy with where I am. Um, the news division has given me a voice. I don't speak for myself, only I've learned not to just speak for myself. There's so many people that are experiencing the same problems that I'm experiencing. Although people approach me and say, just speak for your own experiences. What is it like being a lady living with urbanism? I will speak for myself, but I give, um, I can contextualize in a way that when someone is watching from other countries in Africa can identify and they can feel like, okay, well, I didn't get the platform to be on that show, but thank you, William, for sharing. Uh, so that's why I get approached to do motivational speaking, especially the month of August. I get to speak a lot to women from different walks of life. They don't have to be people with albinism failure. It's every other woman who is on a path to discover themselves. And sometimes you need that motivation to just, you know, to, to have the boost that you're looking for. I don't speak to liberate myself alone, but I do it for others like me. I do advocate and I do campaigns when I get a chance, uh, especially with what's happening in Africa with the mutilation and kidnappings of people with albinism. At the moment, we are working to do a show with Channel Africa, which is a great platform to speak to other countries about how people with albinism are being treated in, in small villages um, across Africa being killed, kidnapped and mutilated. Coming to Johannesburg was a pivotal step to making my dreams come true. My move from Tabanchu was in 2007 when I started my first year adverts. I literally finished matric 2006, moved to Jobek to start first year adverts 2007. When I came to Vets, um, that's when I really got to know who Bulian was. A lot of people were interested to see because they wanted to find out more about me. So this girl, where does she come from? What can she do? Is she talented? She likes to talk too much. What does she like? What's the type of music she listens to? How come she's not shy? You know? Up. So um, 
I knew that a lot of people are looking at me, so it's I, so I started paying attention to what I'm wearing. I mean, I used to wear so many short, short, short dresses, not too short, but I used to rock short dresses because I know people loved my legs. So I knew that I had to capitalize on my assets, you know, so so that when people are looking at me, they know what they're looking at. I had a signature vids walk. I can say that everybody can tell you about the signature vids walk. When I walk there, I would have a long weave and it will just flow and bounce as I walk from my room to the matrix or from the matrix to, to drama school. But I remember the last year there was an international play that I was part of Pride and Prejudice and the New York students came to South Africa for a student exchange program and then that's my first major school play that I was part of. It was amazing and I was like you know what uh, those that thought I didn't have the talent I can't act this is my time to show you what I'm made of. Drama school for me was when I really got to find myself. I knew things were working together for my good when I got a role on Squeezers. In 2012, I got my first role on Squeezers. Um, Mm, I was called in for just one appearance, which was a cameo, my very first one. To finally get my first script, I was like, so I'm finally, finally, finally getting a script that I'm part of. I'm not an extra, you know, extras don't get scripts. So, but to be like a, a cameo, um, to have a cameo with like a lead character or a supporting role, it was an honor for me. And on set, I remember just a lot of laughter, so much excitement, just being happy to see that Jerry Pele, Mama Mary Twala, Lillian Dube, Tulumunedi, um, everyone that's in the cast. Um, and they're such loving, caring people. It was amazing. I had my own um, room, you know, my own changing room where, you know, as an actor, you sit and you just look at yourself in the mirror and just rehearse your lines. It was a dream come true. Everything I do defines who Bule Mulebazi is. Although I must say, it's not easy. A top 5 rated horse racing event in the world, fashion is a highlight for those in attendance. All decked out in blue and white, the Lomorans Queen Plate is the premier event that kicked off everyone's social calendar. That was all part of my master plan to cast John Legend but deprive him of his normal instrument and give that one to Ryan. The House of Truth is not just a name. It is a religion. It is a lifestyle. It is a conviction that drives us. What really excites me is how people have kept it very simple and also played with the theme and how each person has interpreted it in their own way. To stay updated with all the current entertainment news, tune in to Trends every Saturday from 12 to 1. Growing up in Tabanchu, 
as a person with albinism, um, at home I was not the only one because I was told that my dad had a twin, but that was before I was born. And then I once met my uncle's daughter, but it was like a long lost daughter, but we never even got to know each other. But in this community and basically in the very same street, <laughs> I was the very only, only, only one. So, how do you say it? Uh, but now I'm almost threatened, they will say, Let's wife, and I'll be like, Let's wife, I give mao. And my cousins told me to say that. At the time, I didn't know what that meant. My mom never really understood, but she, she knew that um, I was a special child, but she just didn't know what it meant and um, what I needed to do. Like, she also did not know how I had issues with my eyesight. So she just knew that I was a pretty little girl that people liked. I remember one of the things that we would do with my parents is when we go to town, all the white people in town would give me money just by walking in town with my mom. And they enjoyed it. My mom, my dad, my, mom, my aunties, they'll just take me because I had this big um, curly blonde hair and I was very short and tiny and I, I walked from a very young age. So I did literally looked like a doll. Um, and you'd find that people will give me money because of that. So my mom always knew that my child is a very special child, but she didn't know what albinism was. She didn't know what sun block was that I needed. So you'll find I'll come home because I'll be play, playing thing with my friends. I'll come home red from the sun and she will just put Vaseline and I got a lot of Vaseline and that Vaseline was not good for me, you know. The deaths in my family really hit hard especially my mom's passing. My mom used to get sick a lot, so when I was young, I really didn't understand why, but she would go to the hospital most of the time, and I would know, mama you know, so if mama is not around, which means she's sick. Um, she had um, the calling to be a sangoma. So I think that's how she made sense of that incident, or maybe she was supposed to be a sangoma. She tried her best. So when she was out of hospital, she will pursue the Sangoma, but she will go to the hospital. And then eventually when she completed her, 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 her training as a Sangoma, she only stayed with us for a month and then she passed on. And I found out Hore, she had TB, you know, I mean, that's what was written on the death certificate, Hore. She passed on from TB. The only thing I remember about my mom's funeral was just like finding it very shocking. Like I just couldn't believe that my mom was gone because last time I remember I was sleeping. My mom woke up to go to the hospital because she wasn't feeling well and she always came back and I thought she was going to come back. The only thing I remember of that day when my mom went to the hospital was just her feet passing my, by my bed. And that's the only thing. That's what I thought. But God made sure to bless me with other great mothers. The first time I met um, Mama Lillian Dube, was while I was doing the internship, but she was so nice, and I was just a big fan. I would just sit there and watch the famous people come in and out of the drama division, coming for pitching, pitching sessions, and I'll sit as a trainee and just be like so amazed and in awe of these great people. But I learned a great deal from just observing and learning within my internship. So to finally work with her on Squeezers, it was a dream come true. What impressed me most was her confidence. She didn't make any excuses for being an albino because it's not a disease. It takes all kinds to make the world. Mudimonalidi variations are high. Then nobody has to think they're better than the other person. Like we are black, other people are green, some are blue. So who are we to say I am the best? Humudimu, we are all the same. It makes me very proud because for me, she's my own child and her success is my own. Much as I gave her squeezes, I didn't discover her. She had already on her own been doing things, hence she was bold enough to approach me. But for having given her a role in squeezes, I wanted to prove to everybody that albinism is not a disease. And I wanted another person who's an albino to watch Pudling and know that he or she also has space in society. Mudimu haiti posu. Ache, bule. Ore kaufa hafi ya chele tereklo yi winang hese. Ache, che. Watle ila jwale ausi. Because jwale bampa the same amount yung offering you. She loved the camera. She always loved the camera. She loved being 
behind the camera, in front of the camera. She loved being on radio. She just loved being, being able to communicate and share her, her views and opinions of the world. I used to fetch her in the holidays and bring her to Joburg or I'd take her with me on holiday to Port Elizabeth or, you know, we'd go on holiday. So every holiday she'd come and stay with me. I mean, I didn't adopt her officially, but I became like a, like a sort of foster mom of some sort. So we just started bonding and over the years we bonded and we formed a, 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 a relationship, a friendship. A, you know, she, obviously she's younger than me, so she sees me more as a mother figure, but for me she's like a, she is like a child, but she's also like a friend. My wishes for her moving forward that she, uh, she becomes a big star and she gets to travel the world. Um, and she gets to work all over the world, would be fantastic for her. And uh, she doesn't limit herself. She doesn't just think Joburg's the only place. She must look at the world as her oyster, and go out there and achieve it. I sure had my fair share of challenges when I started working here at the SABC News Division. While I was working on the bulletins as a producer, my background is media, so I'm not, I wasn't a formally trained journalist, journalist. So I just remember being so depressed because it was real stories, real, real news. It's not even fake news, it's real news about people dying and the war. And then there was a time within the news division where I was demoted. Uh, from a producer to being a PA because my line manager at the time felt that I was I was too slow. I couldn't report at the pace that was needed for me to report on. Looking back at that now, I sort of understand why it happened that way because when I started the news division and I'm like, no, it's all good. I can do anything because who wants to say, no, you can't, you know? You want to give it a try and see if you can or not. Thank you for choosing us as your source of information. Welcome to your show about Africans who are dedicated to shaping our continent for the better. I am honored to report on this story. When I started Bopilong, I was just excited that I can be able to show my capabilities as a producer and a presenter. So being on air um, uh, for the first time in the news division for me was a big achievement. Uh, because I mean, I remember growing up and I'm thinking, hmm, I don't see a lot of news readers, you know, women or, or guys with albinism as news readers or weathermen or news presenters. I don't see that. I wonder if it's a possibility. Um, and then when I finally got an opportunity to be in the news division, I was excited, it was exciting for me, but I was not prepared of just the challenges that would come after that and that, that, would, that were personal um, things that I discovered about myself. So, I mean, I've always been short-sighted and a lot of people won't come to me and say, mm, you look like you're short-sighted because I don't walk around that way. I don't work on that pace. I don't always bring it up when it's not need needed. Um, at the time, I wasn't even exposed to contact lenses, I just knew I hated glasses. So my sight was very poor, very, very poor. Um, and I started working on Bupilong, oh, being on screen. I loved it, but I dreaded it because the crew did not understand that I'm short-sighted. I remember this incident, uh, we were doing our third show when we started the show and I was presenting and I was really struggling to see the auto cue. And I just heard through the the, 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 the headset, the earpiece that we put on. Someone saying, this girl can't read. Who put her on screen? <laughs> okay, I'm laughing now, but it wasn't funny. And, yo, oh, it hit hard. Um, I just wanted to cry right then and there, but I didn't. Um, I presented the show, did the whole show, did the interview, but I was just sad because I'm like, but I'm doing my very best right now. Um, also, I didn't figure out a way to find a way that works for all of us, for the crew and for myself. And I didn't know if there are other alternatives to do the show. We looked at ways to, to increase the font size. Now, as like everybody knows, I walk into Studio 10. The first thing we do, we work on the lineup. Once we've got the lineup on the, on the, on the system on, in Studio 10, we just increase the font. Everything is fine. And a lot has changed. I've started also... Um, you know, when you work in a, in a certain environment, you understand that, okay, there are certain things about yourself that need to improve or that need to, you need to grow. So I knew I had to do something about my eyesight. So that's when I went and I got contact lenses, which helped a lot.
The Law Society has slammed notices sent to four universities to jack up standards or risk losing their LLB courses. The Council on Higher Education issued a stern warning to the universities to conform within six months. I think it will affect the university. I think uh, um, outside, the, outside the law faculty there's a funding issue. It's been 112 years since Tinok Sontonga died as a relatively unknown composer, choir master and teacher. But today his legacy lives on through his greatest composition, Ngosi Sigeleli Africa. For all your news updates, stay tuned to Your World from Monday to Sunday. As a transgender activist, do you feel welcome? Are you free here in South Africa? In South Africa, we think that 1994 just took an eraser and erased a lot of the issues of apartheid. What is the difference between you and me? You know, a person can easily say we're all human, but we need to embrace our differences. The fact that it is called a gay club, why are other clubs not called other things? It's, 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 a, safety, it's a safety thing, you know, uh, by virtue of actually speaking about this incident, brings about the question of why do you even need a club that needs to be called a gay club. I cannot walk into a club with my lover, my male lover. I cannot walk into Taboo, a South African club, and just hold my lover and we kiss and then people oh, think it's no, okay. Oh, they do that? Uh, what we do, but then there have been instances of actually people, uh, bouncers walking in and actually telling you to stop or get out of the club. Do you think it was a mistake that you were born a boy? I've come to, uh, not to peace with my body, but I've accepted myself where I am completely. Somebody may say you are lying. Uh, because if you have accepted yourself completely as uh, you are, you would be uh, the boy that your mom gave birth to. I can self-actualize. I can become what I want to be at the end of the day. Being a mom has also shaped my view on life. I can see she notices when I'm on TV because she just stands next to the screen and she looks like, is that really my mother? <laughs> I really love her and I think she came at the time when I had just lost my aunt and I was trying to figure out what is life about? What am I doing? Who am I living for? But I'm aware that I'm doing this for the next generation in my family so that they know that Auntie Puleng, hey, there was Auntie Puleng. Lynn, I want to be on TV, I want to travel the world, I want to do what Auntie Puleng did. Or she'll say, I want to do what my mom did. I want my daughter to know that she can be brave. She must be brave. She must not feel entitled. She must have guts. Uh, no one owes her anything. I'm going to work hard for her and God willing, I live long enough to see her grow into a strong, powerful, beautiful woman that I'm hoping that she will be. Don't be afraid of anything or anyone. Um, fear nothing but God. Um, so I want her to, to go out and do whatever that she wants. I've learned that you can be anything. Coming from Tabanju and being here today, it showed me that being a mom and having a career is absolutely demanding. Every time I experience a challenge, um, I know that nothing is final. You just have to keep trying different ways to see which one will work for you. And I always knew that to be in the industry, I had to formulate my own way. I had to start up my own path and, and create um, a, a foundation that will start with me and be able to last longer for other people to, 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 to use the same platform. From Bulengi to Tulentusengata, like Hakun, if ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็
we had sat down at one time and said, the sky is the limit. And this wasn't a surprise for me. I, I expect her to win even more awards. Uh, she's very good uh, with uh, the drama aspects. And as a result, as a presenter, that she's taking very much to the full. So she's bound to win more stuff like that. I'm very happy because and now and I think Liana will happy and as a friend I'm happy because I that in to just good yet and in a way Lorona Ware motivate our whatever that you want as long as you believe Amohiona then you can be able to achieve everything about Lanque achieve. No matter how the circumstances are, we can do it. We can achieve the dreams. We can achieve how we can achieve the obstacles. 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 Receiving this after this year means a lot to me. But I sure have a lot to do. There's still a lot more to achieve. I want to change the face of mainstream media. Uh, what mainstream media looks like right now is skinny tall girls who can speak proper better English. There's nothing wrong with that, trust me. There's still a market for that, but we still need to pay attention to, 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 to um, alternative voices, alternative stories. And it's just a shame that at the moment a lot of people who are telling our stories, uh, who are telling stories of women and men with albinism, they tell it from a point of um, if, if they don't cast a, a suicidal, shy person with albinism, they will cast a supernatural. You are either an alien or you, you, you are a mermaid. There's something supernatural about you. I'm looking forward to seeing stories on TV or hearing radio dramas or reading or seeing any other platform, online drama series of people with albinism being cast as human beings. Everything in my life has given me an even more greater purpose. One point four billion Rand was raised to build the institution. Additional